at this special session here tonight if you have found your way here you are not here by chance the almighty has brought you here for a purpose i see people here tonight by the time you leave this gathering your unending laughter shall start By the time you leave this gathering, all the satanic record that has been haunting your family line shall be destroyed. By the time you leave this gathering, all the vampire power that has been assigned to drink your blood shall be completely disgraced. By the time you leave this gathering, those things that they say is not possible for you to achieve, the anointing to excel and to achieve them will come upon you in the name of Jesus. Let there be silence now. I'm going to pray now. It is not an ordinary prayer. We do not pray ordinary prayers in Mountain of Fire. These prayers are targeted prayers for some people here. That person here, at any time you are close to a great breakthrough, strange dreams will start. And as a result of the strange dreams, the breakthrough will collapse. Tonight is your night of deliverance. As I pray this prayer, you that lady over there, that the witchcraft power of your stepmother has kept your life on the shelf, that witchcraft power shall be dismantled here tonight. As we pray this prayer, that cleverly hidden infirmity that you cannot even discuss with anybody, all of a sudden you will feel as if they are pouring cold water on your head. And that infirmity shall flee away from your life in the name of Jesus. As I pray this prayer, there are some people here, I don't know who you are, but the Lord said they have been mocking you. They have been laughing against you. As I pray this prayer, that your point of mockery shall become your point of testimony. In the name of Jesus. But in this kind of prayer, don't let anybody's voice be louder than yours. In this kind of prayer, say an amen that will shake the gates of hell. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the power in the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the victory that was won on the cross of Calvary. We thank you because you have been our rock and our shield. You have never failed, you will never fail. Thank you for the guardian of your children here today. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Father, I stand here as a prophet today and I decree by the decree of heavens that any tormenting power, any manipulating power, any dominating power that has put anyone here into bondage, I command you to depart in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Anyone here who is being suppressed, pressed down, harassed by the powers of the enemy, right there where you are, whether it is convenient for the enemy or not, I command you to be released. 
Receive your deliverance. Receive it. 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 Something is happening over there. That's right. Yes. They have held it down for almost 10 years. Right there where you are. I command your release in the name of Jesus. Every power pressing down your head. So that you will not rise to the level you are going to. You are supposed to rise to. I bind and I cast them out in the name of Jesus. I bind and I cast them out in the name of Jesus. Be released, 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 be they have been troubling your life, pressing you down, oppressing you. Right there where you are, the power of God is going to come upon you, and that yoke will be broken completely. That is the first person. That is number two. That's number three. That's right. Yes. The curses that have been working in your family line to cage all the women, I release you from that curse now. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> That's the first person. Something is coming out of that sister. That's the first person. That's number two. That's number three. Four. Five. Let her go. Let her go. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I'm praying right now that every blockage on the way of anyone here, career-wise, business-wise, marriage-wise, let the blockage be shattered to pieces. In the name of Jesus, let it be shattered to pieces. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. It is your time to pray now. It's your turn to now pray. This prayer, pray it with merciless violence, pray it in a way that everyone will know you are praying. Pray it in a way that it will impact your life forever. This prayer has helped millions of people all over the world. And as you pray tonight, it shall help you. Amen. Say this loud and clear. Powers! Powers! That battle my parents. I am not your candidate. Can you shout that loud? Die! In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to declare it. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Jesus. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Silence. Please don't say anything for now. Just keep quiet. 
When I want you to talk, I'll ask you to talk. Father, I'm praying for this sister. Whose treasures have been hidden in the waters? Ordinarily, this sister is not even supposed to be in this country now. But because they are hiding her treasures in the water, she could not move. You, that sister, where you are, the hand of God is coming upon you. Ah, don't say anything. It's coming upon you. That bondage and covenant with the waters, I break it now. I break it now. I break it now. Now. Now begin to recover. Everything hidden in the waters that belongs to you. Recover them. Recover them. Recover them. Recover them. Father, as many as are here tonight, and there are some spirits laying claim to their lives. You cannot lay claim to these lives anymore. They are already in this holy arena. Therefore, you this stubborn spirit husband. You this stubborn witchcraft of the family line. You the domestic handcuff holding tight to these hands. Now release this person. Right now. Yes. Yes. You can feel that electric power of God going from the top of your head to the sole of your feet, from the top of your head to the sole of your feet, from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Beginning from now, places they say you will never get to, receive the anointing to get there. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. A louder amen. A louder amen. Before you sit down, I'd like you to be a prophet unto five people. Look at your friend stretching there. Say, my friend. You shall be the advertiser of God's power. In the name of Jesus. Say to five people, say to five people. Amen. Now before you sit down, I'd like you to speak to the life of seven persons of your choice. <laughs> Say, my friend, any power that wants you to die shall die in your place in the name of Jesus. Seven people of your church. Shout hallelujah. Obviously, God bless you. Amen. Listen to this very short message before we go into some concluding sessions of prayers here tonight. Look at somebody straight in the heart. Say, I break out of my limitations by the power in the blood of Jesus. Can you say it again? Turn to somebody again and say the same thing. Turn to somebody again and say the same thing. Shout hallelujah. Breaking out of your limitations. That's this short message. Breaking out of your limitations. And I'm going to be using somebody's life story as a basis. 
breaking out of your limitation. A limitation is a restriction. A limitation is a delay. A limitation is a stop. A limitation is a ban. And it is a tragedy and a disaster when somebody has the potential to rise, but for some reasons, something presses you down and you cannot rise. It is a tragedy when something keeps dragging you back, keeps dragging you back to where you're supposed to be. It's a tragedy when what you see in the dream about your life and about what God wants to make you is different from what is physically happening. It's a tragedy when people look at you and say you are so gifted, you are so talented, you are so beautiful, you are so handsome, but you find that you are underachieving. It is a tragedy. And if you do not deal with it, it will deal with you. In the spiritual realm, nothing just goes. Nothing goes. Some actions must be taken. You have to fight to possess your possession. You have to fight to enlarge your coast. You have to fight for you to move forward. Life is most times not fair. A lot of people come crying to pastors, Pastor, this is unfair, this is unfair, this is unfair. Life is unfair. From which book did you read that life will be fair? Life is not fair. And because life is not fair, you need to decree that that life must be fair to you. It's a battle. It's a war. You must fight. Life is completely unfair. There is a lady who married as a virgin. Now she can't have a child. There is another person. She has slept with 200 men plus uh, 200 women. And now she has twins. So it's not some fear. So because life will not give to you what you deserve, you need to fight to get it done. There are lots of people here who, if their lives had moved the way it should move, they will not be at the level they are now. So right there where you are, start to get angry in your spirit. Because uh, if you do not deal with it, it will deal with you. A limitation it's a very bad thing, especially when you know you can be better than where you are, but the enemy has kept you limited. As I stand before you now, I feel sorry for our country. I even feel sorry for the whole of Africa as a whole. God has an agenda for Africa. God has a plan for Africa. Of all the continents in the earth, there is no continent that has mineral resources and the kind of deposits of wealth that we have on the continent. But in spite of that one, we're still limited. It's true, the missionaries came and brought the gospel. Thank God for the missionaries that came and brought the gospel. But the missionaries, they came and they said, what is your name? Say, my name is Olu Dari. I said, no, you must be baptized in water. We'll change you to Philip. Change your name to Philip. They're talking about changing of names. Olu Dari, Philip. Philip means lover of horses. Change your name to Caleb. Caleb means dog. Change your name to Deborah. Deborah means a bee that stings people. So you are taking, they're just changing the names. Then they change the music. So you start singing minor keys, uh, sharp keys, they change those ones. Then they start changing our clothes. So instead of now introducing to us a new nature. We are getting a new culture. And that culture has not helped us. A lot of European culture, all kinds of things has entered into Christianity, which is not really supposed to be there. For the same reason, that's why you say that in Mountain of Fire, we don't celebrate Christmas because Christmas has its origin in worship of idols. It's not a Christian thing. And there are many things that have entered like that. that we just, just go in. So Africa has leaders who are not leaders. We promote the inferior and demote the superior. Everywhere you go, there is hardly anywhere where there is good leadership, simply because we have been limited. Whereas it's not supposed to be so. The gospel got to Africa before it got to Europe, but we messed it up. The gospel had to come a second time. 
Well, before the gospel got to anywhere close to Europe, America, it arrived in Africa to Ethiopia. It's in, it's in, it's in scripture. What well, is this limitation? Limitation, limitation. That's part of why we're here. Breaking out of limitation can be a personal thing. It can be a global thing. It can be a local thing. It can be a country thing. It can be a business thing. Where you want to break out of limitation. And the principles are always the same. I'm praying for somebody here today. Everything that has kept you down shall be dashed to pieces by the power and the blood of Jesus. Let your amen roar like thunder. Let your amen roar like thunder. That's, that's the tragedy you find us in. We have leaders in Africa who feed their people to lions. Lions will eat them up. We, are, we, we have people with Lexus, or my Jeep, all kinds of things, but there, there is no road to get to their village. Other nations are going to the moon. We are busy importing cars. Here. Yeah. Importing cars. The, one, there was one professor who job is many many years ago who, who put together a car the man was uh, the man died and the project died and that's where we are something that is a satanic conspiracy to limit the black man and until we break out of it that's a problem now in Nigeria here the Nigerians are known to be extra intelligent extra intelligent. It is a Nigerian man who will withdraw money from a cash point without putting card. It's a Nigerian man who will make phone call and the phone will not charge him. It's a Nigerian man who will convince a white immigration officer to help him carry his cocaine. Claiming that it is a powder for the wife. Nigerians. In fact, there used to be a joke amongst British police that if you catch a Nigerian, don't let him think. Don't let him think. Once he starts thinking, <laughs> that once he starts thinking, we out with you. And anywhere you go, immediately you appear with your green passport. Everybody is at a lot. They, are, they are here. <laughs> Those people are here. Nigerians. It's Nigerians. That uh, there was a program at BBC many years ago, and this BBC man said God only created three kinds of human beings: so the black, the white, and Nigerians. <laughs> BBC, so it's the black, white, Nigerians. Like the only three kind of people. We have, uh, we we can eliminate lack of power in this country in six months. We have coal. Some people, some countries generate power with coal and even give to other people. We have coal. There is water. There is wind. There is sun. There is even your excreta. But where are we? Problems. Some of the greatest brains in the world are from this nation. Pilots, nuclear physicists, all those people, they are from here. But something that is this satanic conspiracy. Just limiting, limiting the black man. And if you don't break out of that mold, it will be a serious disaster. I am praying for somebody here today. That I said every limitation that has kept you down shall be shattered to pieces in the name of Jesus. Shall be shattered to pieces in the name of Jesus. Practically every week now, when you switch on television, you will see Egypt is boiling. You see boiling in Egypt. Don't you see it? Egypt. But the truth is this. The original Egyptians, those people who built the pyramids and all those things you are reading about in scriptures, they were Africans. They were black people. Black people. When Moses was going to be trained, he was trained in Africa. When Joseph, who was one of the greatest administrators was in Africa doing, the, doing, the, doing his business there. Even Jesus himself had to go to Africa. They, took, they ran with him to Egypt. So you see, the, that plan has been there. But the original Egyptians who were blacks, when they forgot God and began to do what they could, should do, 
the Arabs came, chased them out into the poor nations, and so they are in poverty now. While their nations have been taken over. That is the truth. Because of this limitation, I pray one more time that every agenda of domestic witchcraft, every agenda of the power of your father's house, every evil voice speaking demotion to you, all of them shall be destroyed tonight in the name of Jesus. Let your amen be loud and clear. A brother went to the university. He passed all the courses. There was now one course. And that's that was the main course. And if once he faced that course, he will have to come back a whole year again. What kind of limitation is this? So he started praying, he started praying, he started a cry to God, a cry to God, a cry to God. God touched the heart of one professor who didn't know that he was doing the brother a favor and he was breaking the yoke. At the Senate meeting, when they were going to decide all the results, because the Senate also approved all the results before they are released, one professor stood up and said, well, um, these students have not done badly, but I think we can still do something instead of uh, just um, well, allowing frustrated students to be many in this campus. I think uh, I, want to, I want to suggest that we should give everybody 10, 10 marks extra. Some people say, ah, why? Say, but we don't, if, we, if, if many of them come here to repeat, they'll be frustrated students. So please, just let's, let's, it doesn't cost us anything. Let's give them. Even if we give them 10, 10 marks, nobody will score 80 or 70. So give it to them. So that was how they gave 10, 10 marks overboard. And with the 10 marks, the brother was able to break that limitation. You will break your limitation. Let your amen be louder than that. That was a sister at the headquarters. The husband had traveled for 15 years. The pregnancy she had when the man was traveling had become, uh, is in the second school. The man had never seen the boy. And this woman, this, anytime this woman goes to the embassy, problem. Anytime she goes to the embassy, problems. It was when she now got to the mountain of fire, she began to know that all those patterns, once something is a pattern, it's a pattern, it's a pattern that is a limitation. For the first time, she learned it. She didn't learn this before because uh, where she was going is um, our Father. Unto all blessings are known. Mercifully, glad that thy servant may be delivered from the fear of the night. The name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Those prayers are good in 1930. Not now. Not now. The enemy has changed to gear number five. Not now. The man who is crying day and night, the enemy says, ah, what are you crying? Wait. Then you are saying, oh, the father. <laughs> they waste the person. So, she came out of her shadow praying. She prayed. So, on the next interview date at the embassy, she took three of her prayer warriors friends to stand outside the gate of the embassy and they were praying. They were speaking in tongues and they were praying, walking about. So the woman got in. They said that day, there was a particular window. They, they allocated 36 people to that window. 31, 30, from, from 1 to 33, the woman there, white woman, refused everybody visa. None. 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 This woman was number 34. She was already wee wee. Then she now got there. The man said, well, you've been here before and we have refused you and I will refuse you again. Why do you? Why? She, was, she was bombarding her with questions. Then another man came along and said, excuse me, excuse me. The boss wants to see you for a second. The boss wants to see you for a second. So this woman left the window. When he left the window, the new man came in and said, how many days do you want to spend? I want to go and see my husband. It's okay. That's fine. Come and pick up your passport on Wednesday. Next. Immediately the next person came after the madam. The former woman came back. <laughs> your limitation shall break. You shall break. You shall break. You shall break. You shall break. In the name of Jesus. Let your heaven roll like thunder. First Samuel chapter 16. 
we are using the life of David as an example of breaking out of limitations. The Lord said, I saw one here. Your name is Yinka. The Lord said, I should tell you that all the battles you have been facing, they are over today. First Samuel 16 from verse 16. Or let's pick it from 14. The background is that Saul the king was sick and they needed somebody to play music to get him well. First Samuel chapter 16 verse 14. If you are there, say yes. Okay. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God troubled thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants, which are before thee, to seek out what? A man who is a cunning player on an harp. What kind of player? Cunning player. I mean, excellent player on an harp. And it shall come to pass, when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servant, Provide me now a man that can play well, and bring him to me. Remember, cunning player that can play well. None that can play rubbish. None that can play nonsense. You see, uh, you see a lot of people on this keyboard. There are keyboardists and there are keyboardists. Some of them are playing absolutely nonsense. Some are just vamping. Some cannot read one word of music. So there are different categories. Even everything, there are categories of evil singers. So now it's a man that can play well. A man that is cunning on the instrument. Verse 18. Then answered one of the servants. Who answered? Just a servant. And said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, and a mighty violent man, and a man of war, and prudent in matters, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesus and said, Send me David thy son, which is with what? Sheep. Look cunning player, mighty valiant man, man of war, prudent in matters, comely person, but is with sheep. They concern him to the sheep in spite of all these uh, qualifications. They concern him so much to the sheep that even when Samuel came to their family to look for a king, he was not even invited. Something as there is a limiting force that was upon David. It had to be broken. Say, I break, I break every, limitation every limitation upon my destiny, upon my destiny by, the power by the power in the blood of Jesus. Blood. Shout it three times! So Saul had become king on a platter of gold. He didn't fight any battle. He didn't converse for it. They gave it to him on a platter of gold. No wonder they said that nothing good comes easy. David fought war. Solomon did not fight. He lost the kingdom. God gave instructions to Saul. Go to the Amalekites. Destroy them. Don't spare them. Saul did not listen to the instruction of God. Saul is now troubled by evil spirits. And king, the king was misbehaving. And talking strangely. Talking like somebody who is beside himself. And the people in the palace were concerned. 
So how can our king be talking like this? Everybody give their opinion. What can we do? King needs deliverance. King needs deliverance. What shall we do? At last they agreed that for the king to be delivered, the instrument of deliverance or relief must be music. Music. Next problem was that how do we get the right musician to be used? A musician whose music possesses the power of deliverance must be identified and brought to the palace. Then one person in the king's palace spoke about a little shepherd boy in the bush. He spoke about the boy in the bush of whom his own father's house would not have voted for him if he wanted to be governor. But he was there at the back of the desert. One unsolicited servant in the palace spoke up concerning David before the king. And this one was what prepared the passage of David to the palace. And from that palace to the throne. There are lessons to learn from here. You do not need a VIP voice to bring you to your place of breakthrough. The voice that brought David to his place of breakthrough was the voice of his servant. Not a VIP. The voice may be the voice that will bring you to your breakthrough may be ordinary servant's voice. David was not there. He was not in the palace. He didn't know the discussion. He did not even know that the king was sick. But they, allocate, they, they located him right there where he was with the voice of an ordinary servant. He said, I know somebody who is there at the servant. May the Lord raise a voice for you. Say, oh God, alive! Raise a voice for me where I have no voice. Say it again! Say it again! Amen. Meaning that a servant, a messenger, a clerk, a housemaid may hold the key to your place of glory. And you will receive that key. God can plant a servant in high places to be a voice for you. Where you have no voice at all when your day comes. Most of you will have had, I got my scholarship to study abroad. I came from a poor home. My, my first school fees was 16 naira. My father could not afford it. He had to borrow. And then when this Commonwealth scholarship came out, I saw the form, filled it. The day I brought it to somewhere in race course here to submit the form, uh, they said it had closed. It closed one month ago. He said, why are you just bringing it now? I said, well, I said, I don't know. I said, I thought uh, it's not closed. I said, it's closed. Bye-bye. I now stood by the entrance of that Ministry of Education office with my head bowed down. All of a sudden, somebody came out with a plate. He wanted to go and buy food for his boss. It was a clerk or a messenger. And he said, ah, young man, what's the problem? I said, ah, I applied for Commonwealth Scholarship, but I heard that it has closed. He hey. said, why are you just bringing it now? I said, I didn't know. And I said, as a matter of interest, what is, what is the class of your degree? I said, I had first class in microbiology. He said, hey, you have first class in microbiology. It's okay. He put the plate down. I said, bring the form. Let me go and talk to my boss. So, so he got inside. After some time, he, he took me in. And he said, uh, excuse me, sir. This person is my brother. This is my brother. He, he didn't know that the thing has, the thing has gone. The man said, we have already shot him for interview. Uh, he's too late. I uh, said, but well, you are a good boy in this office since he's your brother. Let him put the form over there. That was how I got a Commonwealth scholarship. May the Lord raise a voice for you where you have no voice. May he raise a voice for you where you have no voice. In the name of Jesus. David had never been to the palace in his life. David had no way of getting there. No way. David had no promoter. David had no long leg. David had no godfather. 
David had nobody to showcase himself to. This is a serious situation. Even though David had the talent, he had the answer to the crisis in the palace. It was the solution to the crisis in the palace. But nobody could bring him to come and confront the crisis. There are many of us like that there. You are a solution to a crisis. You are a solution to a problem. But there is nobody to take, bring your hand up and take you to where you will be that solution and, and that will be able to promote your destiny. But I decree that as from today, your divine helpers must arise. In the name of Jesus. It is a tragedy to be kept in the cooler when you have solution to a problem and the problem is raging. But there was a voice. There was a voice that God had arranged to speak to the king so that David can come up. That voice lifted David up from the back of the bush where he used to play the instruments to the palace of the king. How was David going to be needed? It was God's agenda. But push him there. God put upon the king a problem. Whose solution was in the pocket of David? God put upon that king a problem. And the solution is the pocket of David. So they had to look for a David to solve the problem. David, a boy despised by the majority, a young boy to whose strategic strategy his strategic potential his household does not even recognize it but the servant said i have seen a son of jesse i have seen him in the desert i'm sure all the time david was playing his harp in that desert he didn't know that he was being watched somebody was looking at him watching him listening to his music he was just improving himself and being very good at it but he didn't know it is a useful thing this is where my first advice to you young people here is coming today. Be very, very careful of what you do. Be very careful where you do it. There may be an observing eye that will report you one day either in your favor or against you. So be very careful what you are doing. Be very careful how you are doing it. Because there may be an observing eye that is looking at you, but you don't know that will report you someday either to your favor or against you. That's the first advice. You need to be very careful. May God raise a voice for you in the day of adversity. May God raise a voice for you when you desperately need to be promoted. May God raise a voice for you when negative voices want to pull you down. May God raise a voice for you to support you where you have no supporters. Amen. May God raise a voice for you when it's only paper, your paper that is in their front. May God raise a voice for you to defend that paper. Amen. So, oh God, arise! Raise a voice for me! Say three hearts! Amen. My second advice to you is this. Do the little things you do so well. Do those little things so well that your work will speak for you even in the palace. Do it well. Do it so well that they will jump over the big and the more eloquent to come and look for you. Do it so well. Unfortunately, many young people they shut the door of greatness against themselves because they wanted big occasion to showcase themselves. Come and play in the desert. No. I want to go to big concert. I want to go to big organization. I want to go to big television. I want to go to... David was at the back of the desert. It was from there his gift promoted him. Some are looking... They want to start big. I want to start big. The only place in this world where success starts from the top is the cemetery or the mortuary or the burial ground. That's the only place. The success starts from the front, from the top. Others, you, you build up 
uh, from the bottom. The mountain of fire and miracles mercy started in the sitting room. But these days now, I have so many letters with me as general overseer. People who want to start ministry, they, are, they want to start to no congregation, no member, is asking for 35 million. He wants to buy mixer. He wants to buy drums. He wants to buy organs. He wants to buy expensive microphones and there is no member. So they don't want to start small. And that, is, that has shut down so many young people. They think is that when they start making noise to the whole world, God will promote them. It's a lie. When you do the little things you do so well, you stand the chance to do greater things. Are you a cleaner? Clean it well. Are you an electrician? Do it well. Are you a carpenter? Carpenter it very well. Are you a singer? Sing well. Are you a barber? Bab well. Whatever you are, do it well. Because the three major laws of success are this. Law number one, the road to greatness in any line is to make yourself a master of that line. The road to greatness in any line you are, just make yourself a master of that line. Whether you are a computer person, whether you are selling, buying, the road to greatness is to make yourself what? A master of that line complete master of that line. Two, if you can do something, if you can do something good, better than everyone else, if you can do something good, better than everyone else, no matter where you live, people will look for you. Three, everyone created by God is a solution to an existing problem. Those are the three laws of success, three major laws of success. So your good work will compel men and women to look for you in your shop, in your house, wherever you are. Whatever you are doing, do it so well. Do it so well that they will bypass the big names. They will bypass those who think they have fame and they will come and get you to do it. That's why I know that your coming here today, the Lord will give you the overtaking spirit. You shall overtake those who are superior. You shall overtake those who have gone before you. So, what we're saying is this. We're talking about breaking limitation. Where you are now is all you need to get to where you are going. So, do it well. Where you are now. You may not be appreciated by your family. You may not even be appreciated by the church. But in your season, God will send messengers who will speak for you. And they will look for you. And God will keep men standing for your honor. I pray for you today. That all the powers I want to consign you to the back, they can they will celebrate with you. Yeah. Then notice, David did not lobby to go to the king's palace. He didn't lobby. God just raised the man who advertised him. May God raise an advertiser for you. Yeah. May God raise a voice for you that will vindicate you. Yeah. May God raise a voice for you that will promote you. Yeah. The malice of your household will not chain you down. Amen. The agents, evil agents in your household will not chain you down. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So whatever you do, do it very well. The life of a man is divided into three phases. Phase number one, ages one to forty which may be the age bracket of most people here today. I'm not sure. Phase number two, ages 41 to 80. I'm not sure how many of those categories are here too. Number three, ages 81 to 120. Anybody who's 81 years old here? Nobody. So those are the three phases of a man's life. Phase number one, which is from age of 1 to 40, is your time of preparation and foundation laying. Is the time you go to school, you learn what you are going to depend on in life, you put it in position. It is time you make your plans and you have the dreams for your life. When one within one and forty. Is the time you put in place things you want to become and things you plan to become at the age of one to forty. If at that range limitation is still ruling your life. 
and you do nothing about it, it is a possibility that you will cry to the grave. Do you understand what I'm saying? If at the age of 20, you're already getting confused now. 25, you already have six girlfriends. 27, you're already putting condom in your briefcase. You're already going. You're expiring little by little. By the time you push to 40, you find that, and you look back at your life, you find that you had wasted it. By the age of 41 to 80, which is the second phase, that is when you are well baked. It's time to now begin to give back to society, give back to family what God has made you to acquire. It's time that people in the first phase now will be looking up to you to, to be a blessing to them. It's the prime of your life. The time you are supposed to be at the very best of your life. Reaping the reward of uh, phase one. But if at this level two, you are above 40, you are still being limited. And you do not find a way of getting rid of that limitation. It is a possibility that you go to the grave in sorrow. And I don't want that to happen. Phase number three is from 81 to 120. That time you are just reaping the result of your first two phases. It's time you wake up, you pray for your children, and you do all kinds of things like that to make you happy. Those three phases are the phases of life. But as a young person, you must still be in the phase one to forty. I want to pray for somebody here. That wherever you go as from today, when others have been told, don't come back again, you have failed that voice will not sound to you. In the name of Jesus. Now, there are four things. This is where we're stopping now. Four things that made David to break out of his limitation. The first thing, the first thing that made him to break out was that what he knew how to do, he did it well. He did it well. That's key number one. Key number two. David was a warrior. A fighter was a warrior. That's key number two. Key number three. David had to break out of the power of his father's house which had limited the sons of Jesse. And key number four, the presence of God was with David. Those are the four things. Following these four keys, any man can break out of any limitation. Do what you are doing well. Be a spiritual warrior. Do what you are doing well. Be a spiritual warrior. Break out of the power of your father's house. And then let the presence of God fill your life. With those four, we'll break out. With those four, Africa even can break out of the bad situation in which we find ourselves. But then there's a problem. A small problem. The problem is this. There is one spiritual. They call it bad luck. Some people call it misfortune. Some people call it sorrow magnet. Some people call it automatic failure mechanism. But men call it bad luck. That spirit of bad luck was working on David's life. It was his knowledge of warfare that delivered him. If you read the book of Psalm, you will find that this man was a great spiritual warrior. Why do you think David was that aggressive in his prayer, in his psalm? Or have you not read some of those psalms that sometimes when they read, people will say, ah, this is a serious prayer. Say, let the angels of God pursue them. Let them have no rest day and night. Let their way be dark and slippery. Let those terrible prayers from David. Why do you think he has to be praying those prayers? It's because of the battles that he faced. He was a warrior to the core. And anyone who will fight, and possess his possession, we possess his possession. So David was being plagued by this spirit. When they were looking for a musician, he was at the back side of the desert. If not for the fact that he could do what he could do well, he would die there as an unknown shepherd boy. When they were looking for the king to anoint in his family, again, he was at the back of the desert. He wasn't at home. 
If not for divine uh, intervention, it will have remained there. There are people like that here, being troubled, being oppressed by these terrible spirits that are bombarding men day and night. I had a brother. He was to attend an interview. He was about chemist. The deputy managing director of the company was their family friend. And the day before the interview, the man came to the house to congratulate him in advance. So tomorrow is your interview. Don't worry, no problem. I'm there. The day of the so the brother did not read any book. He did not prepare anything. Because to him, it was a walkover. So he went for this interview. But at the split moment, when he was supposed to enter into the interview room, the man who was there as a voice for him had stomach upset. So he went out to the toilet to ease himself. It was that moment he now entered. When he entered the panel and he couldn't see any familiar face, he was troubled. And so they began to daze him with questions. What is glycolysis? Those of you who read biochemistry or microbiology, you know it's the simplest question. You can ask any biochemist, what is glycolysis? He cannot even remember the answer. So since he didn't remember the first one, they were dazing with more questions. They, they embarrassed him so much that the last question they asked him, what is your name? He had forgotten. So they threw him out of the interview room. Immediately he got out of the interview room, the man that went to the toilet came back and said, and said, did somebody like this come here? I said, ah, he has already failed. That is bad luck. That spirit, you have to deal with it. You have to deal with it. I was talking to Goshen members of there are some ministers, they call themselves Goshen. They are ministers who are not MFM pastors, but they are under my mentorship. I, I teach them once in two months. I was telling them that I said, Look, Jonah was inside the boat. The presence of Jonah inside the boat, everyone was ready to waste everybody. No matter how holy you are inside that boat, no matter who is your father, no matter who is your mother, no matter whether you are a pastor or a priest, as far as you have entered that boat of Jonah, and Jonah was still in that boat. Everyone wanted to waste everybody in that boat because Jonah was there. It is possible for somebody to go and enter the boat of Jonah and the person is wasted and everyone is not worried. May all the Jonah that may join your journey enter another boat. But at the same time, at the same time, Apostle Paul was in the ship. And there were two 76 souls there that were meant to perish. But because he was in that ship, God preserved the life of two 76 people because Paul was in that ship. He stood up and said, Men and brethren, cheer up, eat. I see that you have not eaten for two weeks. Please eat. For the angel of the Lord whom I serve stood by me this night and said, None of you shall die. So because he was in that ship, 276 people did not die. May Paul be in your boat. <laughs> that a man doesn't have vitamin C. So, you can enter vehicle, aeroplane with Jonah. And everyone could not bother who was there. He prefers to waste all of them. That is bad word luck. Are you here this evening? You always miss the correct timing of things. Are you here this evening? Things finish before it is your turn. It's bad luck. Are you here this evening? Bad things happen to those who want to help you. It's bad luck. Are you here this evening? You have come from a family where marriages don't work and you are already following the same pattern. Are you here this evening? Your expectations are always cut off. You need to battle this prayer. That's what David had to battle with those all those terrible prayers that you find him praying in scripture. Is to battle this thing that always pushes him back. And not notice that even when David was declared king by Samuel, he took almost 20 years again. 
before he could get on that throne, Saul was there chasing him all over the place. Chasing him all over the place. There was no peace for David. He was, he was running about, running about, running about, running about. Saul wanted to kill him several times, but he did, did not succeed. That's David. The same David even went and fell into error again because there were powers he was battling. But thank God for his aggressive prayers that, had, that delivered him from these things. Are you here? Your helpers changed their mind at the last minute. It's bad luck. I prayed for a woman in Italy. She went for fertility. This fertility treatment they go to, they go to. She went for fertility treatment to the clinic. Seven women were meant to be treated that day. She was number seven. The professor gave all of them injections. When it came to her turn, as the professor wanted to give the injection, the bottle fell down in the hand of the professor with syringe and broke to pieces. The professor was surprised. He said, ah, so I've been practicing medicine for over 40 years. This has never happened before. So the professor went to the fridge to bring another drug to give her the injection. As the professor drew the drug from the syringe, stroke. It developed stroke right away and the professor went down. Bad luck. I'm praying for somebody here. Every bad luck of your father's house assigned against your life shall be destroyed today in the name of Jesus. Are you here today when you are going to a place of blessing something physically in that right there at our headquarters in 1996 a brother wanted to get married. Nobody in that family had ever done proper marriage. All of them, they just grab one woman, selling a car of beans on the street, and get her pregnant, they become wife. All of them, whether they grab the woman, push the woman under the trailer, and get her pregnant. And that's how, that, that's how they all got married in the family. So he was the first person who wanted to break that rule. On the day of the wedding, something happened. And his brother said, anytime he has something good to do, there's a particular dream that he has. The dream is that somebody will come and give him palm wine to drink. Once he drinks that palm wine, anything he wanted to do was always a failure. And he had prayed. But on the wedding day, the night of the wedding, they brought palm wine again. He drank. He drank until when he woke up, he could feel the taste of palm wine in his mouth. The wedding day, he dressed up. As he was coming to church, one car splashed gutter water on his suit. Everything was dirty and stinking. So he had to go and change. Best man was dressing well. The man wedded as gutter water on his body. So this quickly ran somewhere. Uh, the best man put his own clothes and gave it to him. Best man took his own that was washed, was not ironed, and wore it to follow. They started rushing to church to get there in Okada. Again, as they were moving, a vehicle hit Okada. Okada fell into gutter. They got up again. Meanwhile, the wife was in church crying. Say, hey, hey, wala, hey, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Anyway, <laughs> he showed up seven hours late. Seven hours late. And you can trust people. Whether you show up little or you show up early, that's your rice that you say you are cooking for those. The rice you are cooking for those who are not hungry. They will still sit and eat it and complain that it was going bad, not knowing the problem you had faced to get to church. That is what we're talking about. This is what kept David there. There is a, a strange force limiting him, limiting him, limiting him, limiting him. What are we going to do today? Number one, you need to surrender your life to Jesus. Number two, we need to wage war against all this spirit called the spirit of bad luck. You are not where you are supposed to be. But all of you here now, what, what you are now, it's not your final bus stop. God is still taking you somewhere. So, so that, that limiting force is what we want to deal with now. The Bible says, these are the horns that scattered Judah. So that Judah cannot raise his head. So there is a horn that can scatter a man's destiny. So you won't be able to raise your head. Those are the forces we are coming to battle. If you pray this, the prayer of today and you lose your voice. <laughs> and these forces leave you alone. Oh, I will be the happiest man. But if you continue to 
pray like a gentleman and you you did not hit the nail on the head then the ball is in your court we have an agenda to run today that's why god has established this program rise up on your feet now rise up on your feet now all eyes closed all eyes closed in case you are here this evening i'm here to give you maximum assistance in case you are here this evening and you are not born again you've not just surrendered your life to jesus you say pastor i want to surrender my life to jesus <laughs> i know that there is limitation battling my life i want to defeat the limitation wherever you are while all eyes are closed please raise up your right and i want to pray with you you want to surrender your life to jesus you've not done so before just raise up your right hand god bless you god bless you those of you raising your right hand please come quickly to the altar i want to pray for you leave the place come here come here to the front come to the front end. god bless us to come trust him in his presence Jesus is waiting for you here of you at the altar here I congratulate you but before I pray the Lord said there are two, two persons that especially brought here to change their lives but they first of all need to surrender their life to Jesus I'm not asking whether you go to church or you don't go to church you are here so that God can help you and if you miss the opportunity of today I don't know why you get opportunity again so because of those two people I'm going to hold on a little bit join them very quickly now God brought you here to change your life but you need to take this initial step it's important this one you must surrender your life to Jesus I'm going to wait for them after that and then then, then I'll pray for those who are at the altar here thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I surrender all. precious Jesus Those of you at the altar here, I congratulate you. Just bow down your head. Say what I'm going to say after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you now. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take control of my life. As from today, I say bye-bye to the devil. I enter into the kingdom of light. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to pray with you now. Father, I thank you for your children here. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will lay your hands upon them. Bless them to a dumbfounding degree. Lay your hands upon their destiny. Today that I have surrendered your life to Jesus, great things will begin to happen in your life. You shall break out of every limitation and you will fulfill your destiny. In Jesus' name. Open your eyes and look at us. Look at this, uh, look at this handsome pastor over there. Just follow him for one or two minutes and you can join us later. God bless you. Do so very quickly. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. On the mountain, in the valley, on the land, and in the sea. On the mountain, in the valley, on the land, and in the sea. Hallelujah. On the mountain, in the 
It's a mark of hatred on you. You go to some place, they like you. After some time, the likeness is replaced by hatred. Please, find a way to this altar and be on your knees as we pray this particular prayer. If you are going to pray by the altar, pray the way you have never prayed before. Don't let anybody's voice be louder than yours because this is a very serious matter and everybody must cry to God. Whether you are at the altar or you are not at the altar. Can I hear you shouting this loud and clear? Bad luck of my fathers! Damn! In the name of Jesus! That's right! Baposa tendeke yabo shenteraba Baraka santa rabo ko shenteraba santa Open your mouth and decree. Open your mouth and decree. Yes, 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 yes. Mashapola kaya bo shente rabo santa. Riba sapanda kaya bo shente rabo santa. Aha, 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 aha. Yes, 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 yes. In Jesus, then we pray. Those of you at this altar, those of you at this altar, begin to shake your head vigorously. Shake it vigorously. Yes, as you shake it, every arrow sent to demote your destiny shall jump out of that head. Yes, shake it. My prayer, Cassetta. Aha. You can't hide. You have been hiding for years. You the serpent in the head. The serpent in the head. The serpent in the head. Shake it off. Yes, you can't hide. Let her go. Let her go. Bapara da kasetende kaya bashanda. Yes. Every yoke of your followers that is troubling your destiny. Yeah, shake them off. Shake them off. Shake them off. Yes. Shout this loud and clear. Say, I fire back. Every hour of bad luck. In the name of Jesus. Fire 
Jesus. Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you, Jesus. Mokatunda ya boshente. Jesus name we pray everybody stretch your right hand towards me now father these hands that are stretched forward here let them carry the fire of God let them carry the power of God on smiting yourself with these hands every yoke of oppression must be broken every yoke of backwardness must be broken every yoke of infirmity must be broken in the name of Jesus I'm going to count seven from here when I say one you will smite your head and shout with a loud voice fire when you call that fire the fire comes and destroys every plantation of darkness the fire you are calling make sure nobody's voice is louder than yours are you ready now seven times you smite that head seven times one two It's happening. Aha, aha. It's happening. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. I want you to be more aggressive. You need to do it again. Makapota Likaya Bushanda. Riba Sapende Kaya Busha. Your head is the symbol of your destiny. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Today is today. If you have any infirmity in any part of your body, as I count seven, now you smite the place, call him fire. If you have any sickness in any part of your body, don't feel sorry for that. Place. Just smite it. Whether it's in the womb, anywhere it is, smite it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. Father, these are your children at the altar here. I decree by the decree of heavens at every mark of hatred on your head. Is wiped off by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Beginning from after this crusade, you shall trample upon every serpent and scorpion. And the Lord will arise and bless your life. In the name of Jesus. You may go back to your seat rejoicing now. Thank you, Jesus. 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 As you pray this next prayer, if you are in this meeting and the enemy has been terrorizing you with the spirit of death and you are beginning to see dead people in your dreams, find a way to this altar too so that the arrow of death can go right back to the senders. Find a way to the altar. You are dreaming of dead people. You are somebody, something is telling you you are going to die. You are going to die. Find a way to this altar and be on your knees. Everybody will shout this again loud and clear. Every satanic intelligence, Every satanic intelligence. Gathered, against me. gathered against me. Can you shout it loud? 
scatter in the name of Jesus. Scatter the satanic intelligence. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Scatter the satanic intelligence. Aha, 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 aha. Scatter it. Scatter it, scatter it. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, I pray for your children at the altar here. Any power that wants you to die shall die. You shall not die but live to declare the works of God. The Holy Ghost will arise for your sake. His power will fill your life. In Jesus' name we pray. You may go back to your seat rejoicing now. As you pray this third prayer, if you are here in this meeting and you begin to notice that your ways are being blocked, you are suffering from blockages, business blockages, career blockages, promotion blockages, find a way to this altar too and be on your knees. I shout this louder than anyone here. Don't joke with this prayer. It's one of the greatest prayers we are going to pray here. And this, this is not a time to play at all. Can you shout this loud and clear? Oh, no, so evil, Lord! Carry your Lord! In the name of Jesus! Jesus, then we pray. Those of you at the altar, breathe in the fire of the God of Elijah. And breathe out any spirit of hatred, any spirit of stagnancy, any spirit of blockage that has been hindering you. Breathe in that fire and breathe out. In and out, through your mouth and through your nose. Do it very aggressively. Certain things will go out of you right now. This the power that is making you to fail at the edge of breakthrough is being separated from you. Right? That's right. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. In the name of Jesus. Let her go too. Let her go. Aha. Every satanic poison that you have eaten or swallowed is coming out. It's coming out. Enough is enough. Makapota le kaya boshanda raba. Ribo sepila le katenda kaya basa. Bakatenda kaya boshendera bosa. Every evil hand laid on that woman's womb. Every evil hand laid on that man's head. Let the power of God begin to roast them to ashes. In the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. Father, let the blockages blocking your children be bulldozed by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Every instrument of darkness assigned against you shall backfire. The progress you are begin you are beginning to you are begin to you begin to make after this crusade will be greater than every progress you have had. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. We we'll go back to your seat rejoicing now. Thank you, Jesus. 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 As you pray this next prayer. If you are in this meeting and your dream life is a battlefront, terrible dreams, bad nightmares, find a way to this altar too and be on your knees as we pray this prayer. This prayer, everybody will shout this loud and clear. If you are afraid, you can keep quiet. Say, I fire back. I fire back. Every arrow of witchcraft. In the name of Jesus, begin to fire them back. Oh, 
Oh, put your mouth up, put your mouth up, put your mouth up, put your mouth. That's why Jesus brought you here. We are here for an encounter. In Jesus' name we pray. Those of you at this altar to begin to shake your head. Shake it vigorously. Yes, every projection of witchcraft into your dream, as you shake that head, which is your symbol of destiny, they shall be shaken out. Just shake it. That's right. Yes. Every witchcraft projection of your dream, shake it off. 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 Aha. You can't hide. You have been hiding for years. You cannot hide. Every covenant tying you with any spirit husband. Every covenant tying you with any witchcraft person. Every covenant tying you down with any satanic agent. I command you to be broken. Yes, it's broken. It's broken. There is a power of God coming upon you. Aha. Father, I pray for your children here. At every agent of darkness showing up in your dreams, I bind them from your dreams in the name of Jesus. The God of Israel will arise for your sake. He will silence every part that wants to silence you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Beginning from now, you begin to record outstanding success. You may go back to your seat now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right there where you are, it is now time to pray this prayer. We've prayed it a lot during the message. But you now need to now cry to the Lord as loudly as your voice can carry you. Oh God, arise! 